All right, this is going to be take two of the normalizing, well, annealing, normalizing, hardening, and tempering video. Now, the first video that I shot was actually shot out in the forge. It was shot on a different camera, and uh, I've had several people let me know that the volume quality on it was just absolutely horrible. So this is the second attempt at trying to get across some good information. Um, and that's to explain the differences between annealing steel, which is to bring it back to its, its uh, softest state and normalizing steel, which is to um, normalize the grain structure to where you can get a more per, uh, predictability on performance and machinability. Um, now, hardening and tempering are your heat treating, you know, these are, well, technically these are all part of heat treating process. Um, anytime that you heat up the metal to change the grain structure to either soften it, normalize it, harden it, or temper it back a little bit, you're, you're doing a heat treatment process. Now, I've heard several places, uh, I've seen on TV shows, and videos, and things like that and all, um, where people just use the terminology completely wrong. And uh, I guess they, they were informed you know, poorly on what those words mean. Uh, I've, I've had people comment on some of the forge groups that I belong into online and stuff, and I'll talk about, well, hey, you know, I, uh, I tempered my steel, and as soon as I went to go use it, it snapped in two on my knife. And it's like, okay, well, you know, how did you temper it? What temperatures did you temper it? Oh, well, I, I heated up the cherry red and quenched it. Okay, what else? Well, that was it. Then I then I you know cleaned it up and sharpened it and went out to use it. Well, okay, that was only half the heat treatment process. That was hardening, not tempering. Um, and most of the time, when it comes to a knife, you you know hardening. Uh, you know, yeah, it makes it, it makes it super hard, but at the same point, it also makes it extremely brittle. You know, glass. Glass is one of the hardest substances in the world. But look at how brittle it is. Uh, now, I'm going to start from the beginning. Annealing. Annealing is done when you are presented with a pre-hardened piece of steel. Um, a farrier's rasp, a file, uh, you know, things along those lines. Um, if you're in question whether the steel has been hardened or not and you want to heat it up in the forge and work it, anneal it because it'll keep you from uh, from making it too brittle and causing it to break apart when you're in the process of actually trying to forge it out. Um, what it does is it brings back the grain structure to as close to its original form before it was hardened as possible. Now, how you go about this is you heat it up to just past critical, which is non-magnetic. Um, I normally use a uh, large magnet and actually run it along the side to make sure that, you know, that it's non-magnetic. If it doesn't stick, then, well, you know, hey, you reach that critical temperature, then you heat it up for just a few more seconds, and I'll hold it there for just a little bit, uh, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60 seconds. And then you would take and submerge it in something like vermiculite, crushed oyster shell, sand, um, anything that's going to insulate it and hold that heat to it so it cools down extremely slowly over a 24-hour period. Then you can come back, and it's annealed. Yeah. Uh, one shot, just have to wait a long time. Normalizing. Normalizing. You heat it up to critical, non-magnetic, you know, non hold it there for just a little bit, and then you set it off to the side, you know, uh, 
set it over on the anvil, set it off to the side of the, of the forge table that you've got, on a welding table, anything. But let it cool normally. Don't insulate it to slow the process or anything. I'll just let it cool. Um, and then this is actually done two to three times, typically. Uh, so you'll heat it up to that. You'll let it cool down to at least a black heat. Then you'll heat it back up and let it cool back down. And then you'll heat it back up and let it cool back down. Yeah. And and what that does is that uh that actually helps shrink the grain structure back down a little bit to where you get a little bit more predictable performance out of it and you know that you, you know it's no longer work hardened from hammering on it and things like that. And there's less chance when you go to harden it, creating a stress crack or a fracture in it. Um, now this is often done after you've forged out a blade to shape and everything and all and before you harden it. Hardening. Hardening is heating it up once again to critical non-magnetic temperature. And then depending on the type steel it is, whether it's an oil quench steel, water quench steel, or an air quench steel, you'll hold it to the non-magnetic for a little bit, just like in the other processes, except this time you will quench it in the quench medium that it calls for, <coughs> and the way that it calls for. This cools it down at the specified rate for oil, water, or air, whichever one, because water typically cools down a lot faster than oil. And so, you know, if you take an, an oil or air quitch steel and you, you drop it in water and you're expecting to harden it that way, you, you're most likely going to create stress cracks and fractures in it. Um, you know, you're going to hear that dreaded ting that uh, that most bladesmiths fear hearing when they go to quench a, a, a blade. Uh, I thank the good Lord that I have never heard that. I have burned a few pieces up uh, by overheating them in the forge. Now, that's hardening. Bring it out. You let it cool down for just a minute check it with your file it should skate across it you can actually now what I do with mine is I, I do a differential hardening where I actually just heat up the blade area the actual bevel area and not the flats or the spine of the blade and that way I'll end up with uh, with a softer spine and flats on the blade allows it to absorb more shock makes a better performance on a knife but it still needs to be tempered tempering is done after hardening Tempering, uh, most of the steels that I work with uh, are tempered at one hour between 400 and, and uh, 405 degrees. And uh, I work with one that's a, an L series tool steel that I have to do it. I have to do two cycles at that temperature, and most of the time I, I get them back to a str nice straw color. And that allows me to typically end up with a Rockwell hardness between 57 and 59, which is you know good, good strong knife, but not too, not too brittle, but uh, not too soft. Um, and that's your tempering process. It, it's heating it up to, I guess, when it comes to forging, what's classified as a low temp, you know, 400 degrees, <laughs> considered low. Um, because you know most of the time your 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 forging steels and everything and all up over nineteen hundred degrees twenty you know two thousand degrees twenty one hundred degrees um, your uh, what is it your fifty two one hundred you're actually forging it at twenty one hundred degrees that's almost forge weld temperatures which is you know when you're looking at twenty two hundred degrees now this tempers back the grain structure enough to where it it retains hardness but it's not yet completely normalized or annealed so therefore you end up with something that's a tougher blade versus a harder more brittle blade um, now I've got hundreds of books on uh, blacksmithing and everything and all on PDFs and stuff like that I probably got a dozen or more actual hard copies 
one of the ones that I recommend is actually uh, the working of steel, annealing, heat treating, and hardening of carbon and alloy steels. It's a Fred Herbert Colvin book, and this is it right here. Um, now, this is not a pretty picture book. This is just a lot of technical data and explaining what things are. Um, one of the other books that I found informative is The Complete Bladesmith, Forging a Way to Perfection. Uh, Jim Rosolas. I hope I said that properly. This is that book. Now, this has a lot of really good information uh, with example pictures and things along that line for tools, uh, you know, what you're looking at for your grinds, uh, how you go about that, and things like that. Two great books to get. Uh, the Art of Blacksmithing is another one. Um, you know, anything along those lines. But by all means, do the research, learn proper terms for what's being used and what's being done. Um, I hope this turns, you know, turns out better sound quality wise and all. And uh, maybe I'll get that same thumbs down that I got from the last video. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, my information's correct. You can double check. But I uh, appreciate it and y'all have a blessed day. All right.